न्यूज फर्स्ट न्यूज लाइव विथ फराज शाहकोटाले and a very good morning to you this is news live live from the news first studios in dorset street in colombo and broadcasting on tv1 which is a proud member of the capital maharaja group and um, joining me this morning on our set after a try yesterday and thanks to traffic it didn't happen uh, joining us on a set uh, soon after the debate on the scandalous central bank bond uh, uh, saga uh, started yesterday in parliament is that eminent legal personality and the very inimitable Mr. Gomin Dasri. Very good morning to you, Mr. Dasri. Good Dastri. morning. Good morning. It's absolutely marvelous to have you on the set. Uh, and I know you tried hard yesterday. Um uh, but uh, what's a bit of transport problem there? Yeah, but I um, I'm here today. You are here today. We're here today. Uh News First is here today and um straight away I want to ask you 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 read that um, sort of uh, uh, missive that was sent to us by the department of uh, government information is that not is that right did you you read that i i had a quick look at it right now having read this thing is it uh, uh, is it a breach of parliamentary privilege on the part of the director uh, the, as claimed by the director general of uh, government uh, information parliament privilege is a matter a very serious matter which concerns the parliament and has to be decided by the parliamentarians in parliament i think it's very wrong and it is even a, maybe an offense for a third party a government official to be using parliament to privilege as a cover to make accusations that uh, that may be possibly directed that another person on parliament to privilege and that could drive you rise to a parliamentary privilege issue in itself so i think what will happen is not the discussion of parliamentary privilege is just a red herring that is being dragged across maybe with the idea Perhaps of it doesn't understand maybe understand or maybe a method of intimidation now if that is so it's a serious matter and i do not think the press should be intimidated in this way by especially by the information department we will certainly not be intimidated and we shan't bow down uh, to people who are clearly uh, inexperienced in their uh, in their job that they're trying to do they they seem to have stepped out my my problem is that they seem to step out of station um uh, this guy said they they appear to have forgotten the station i think they are not objective they are becoming political animals i think they are on direction and they obey directions and they are not the free press they are kept press and i don't think this should be taken seriously and i'm glad that your media and the rest of the media will not bow down to this kind of uh, threats and intimidation by public officers public officers must learn to behave like public officers and not like political apatachic and if that is so we are in for a bad time and i'm sure the public servants majority of them can rise above this it, it, it's amazing that this uh, missive was sort of appears on, on machines uh, within minutes of uh, uh, our news uh, reports being carried um and it it seems to me um, that you know when the, the truth hurts and it starts to very raw nerve uh, uh, you know i think Uh, uh, this is really not the uh, act of a political authority but owe it to society public servants who wish to flatter please for his favor maybe when that again with the politicians who carry out this kind of excesses i don't think anyone should take it seriously and i think we should really sympathize with this gentleman and see that he does not fall into any harm by becoming over, course, over political over politicized shall we remind our, our listeners and our viewers that uh, uh, the problem the problem as claimed is that we've been highlighting uh, the continued presence of one arjuna mahendran in the corridors of power uh, he he was removed as uh, uh, not that he was removed he wasn't given a new contract president sirisena flatly refused to give him a new contract he was serving the balance of uh, uh, governor nivad cabral's term and uh, at the end of that period uh, the president uh, refused to uh, give him a new contract of his own 
and he was replaced uh, some um, well, about a week or so, several days later uh, by Dr. Indrajit Kumar Swami. So, you know, um, it's, uh, it's absolutely uh, astonishing uh, for the people. Thereafter, we saw the people, um, uh, the people and the media uh, reported what the media uh, showed and that was that Mr. Mahendran was accompanying um, the Prime Minister and other government officials on various um, state uh, trips or, or on, on trips abroad that was clearly on government business. They weren't there to go and see to their mother-in-law's needs or their sister-in-law's whatever. They were representing the people of Sri Lanka. Uh, at least uh, I have two instances, Mr. Gomin, where uh, Arjun Mahendran was part um, of the entourage. Whether he was officially on paper part of that entourage, I don't know. But I do know what I what I saw and what the cameras captured. And that is that there he was in Thailand, in Singapore, and if I'm not mistaken, last time uh, in 2016, perhaps in Switzerland too. Uh, that I stand to be correct, but I'm not sure. But he certainly went on these other uh, visits and he has been very much part and parcel of government business and it has been widely reported in the press uh, they've carried photographs and so on and here we have some chap um, representing the Department of uh, Government Information uh, taking umbrage I don't know um, Mr. Gobin whether this was to do with uh, a personal uh, umbrage because he made the astonishing claim about the government, the movement, and what we were doing uh, uh, to help the people. Well, I think the president has intervened in this matter and has acted very prudently and with some degree of wisdom. Remember, I'm not a supporter of the president whatsoever, but when a person does something good, you must compliment. I mean, not be like the, the SLFP or the joint opposition ob obstruct. Because if you remember, President has now appointed a commission, an independent commission, hopefully, because he has nominated a Supreme Court judge. Just because a Supreme Court judge is appointed, that does not in itself give uh, it uh, integ uh, a kind of independence unless the Supreme Court judge is known to be independent. Whatever it is, it's much better. And in fact, I would say it amounts to a stricture of what the Prime Minister did. What did he do? He appointed three people who were unknown entities to look into the matter and nothing happened. I mean, nobody's taking that serious report seriously, not even COPE or the Auditor General or the uh, Central Bank. Instead of that, the President appointing a commission of eminent people, hopefully, is a very good start to this. And I hope the matter will, be end, will end at this so that we know the truth. But the only thing is, he should have done it much earlier. But, you know, better late than never. Uh, and he has, of course, given uh, the Prime Minister, his Prime Minister, plenty of time to get his act together. And, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, there is a limit to everything. Uh, uh, and um, that limit appears to have been reached and, you know, well done on him. But, you know, um, <clears throat> the, uh, Mr. Mahendran has been, whether officially sanctioned or not, he has nevertheless been speaking on behalf of the government on various um, issues. In fact, he, he was appointed by the Prime Minister to be head of this sort of, they're, they're creating a new um, investment uh, committee. Uh, and um, he, was, he is rumoured and reported to be part of that exercise. And wherever we see, we, we see uh, economic affairs, um, there he is, Mr. Mahindra. And he has long been the subject of speculation as to exactly what his official role is and whether he is being paid and who is paying him and who has sanctioned his, his payment. Or is he actually just la da di dying it in town on his own because of some love for this country? What is it? Well, I'm, I'm frankly, uh, I'm bored with this subject of Mahendran because I think it's about time that people act because there's, to me, it seems to be bipartisanship. I mean, nobody's taking this issue sensibly in Parliament except the JBP. Even the CLFP has been very lukewarm on this issue. If at all, all the credit, the real deep throat is you 
and I think it's about time we move from this topic. May let's may I start on something else, please? Yes, go on. T- tell us what what is the what is most exciting to me is the the, the 2020. I'm not talking of the cricket, the critical cricket match to be played in Cape Town today, but of the 2020 elections. Now it's very interesting. If you look at it, the 2020 elections have a time frame. The presidential election will have to be held between the seven between the 8th of January 2019 to the 8th of January 2020. The general elections, because of this artificial queer rule that it, four years and six months of parliament has to survive, has to be held between the 16th of February and the 16th of August. Now, this is a very critical period. Who is going to run the elections? Undoubtedly, the dates will be determined by the president. So the president has an option of having both elections on the same day, which may be personally very uh, beneficial to him, because these two time periods can be simultaneously uh, uh, combined so that it he could justify it on the basis that elects, it's not going to be expensive to have two elections because all you may need is two ballot boxes because otherwise it would be the same parties who would run for the elections. Mm. Now we know very well as far as the joint opposition is concerned, the presidential candidate can be anybody except Mahinda Rajapaksa. Correct. So Mahinda Rajapaksa, if he's contesting, will have to contest as the Prime Minister. But there is no separate ballot for the Prime Minister, is there? No, there is no present ballot, but there can be the there is no ballot for the Prime Minister, but there is a ballot to make him an MP. He has to first become an MP. Hmm. And as it if is, he already is. He is already now I'm talking of the next election. The next one, twenty twenty. So twenty twenty. So twenty twenty he can be on a parliamentary list, but he can't be on a presidential <laughs> candidate's list. Yeah. So the presidential candidate list I I would say the most likely choice is going to be Gotabe Rajapaksa. Yeah. And maybe Mahinda Rajapaksa will may make an attempt to run as the Prime Minister of the country. But, but, but And as far as the opposition is concerned, the government is concerned, Mr. Sirisena has already thrown his hat into the ring and said he's going to be a candidate. Mm-hmm. So the other candidate will have to be, the Prime Minister's position would have to be go to uh, Mr. Ranil Vikram Singh. But now there's an interesting development. Mm. At the moment, the way things are moving, there, there seems to be a lot of friction between the government, between Mr. Ranil Vikram Singh and Mr. Sirisena. And undoubtedly, in recent acts, Mr. Sirisena seems to be getting on top of Mr. Ranil Vikram Singh. But it's about time, because um, he's obviously been watching, hasn't he? He's been watching, he's, he's been, been watching, and he's been watching, and he's, he's done something. For example, let us say, the very act of appointing the governor, he had to intervene and get ensure that a person independent such of independence like Mr. Indrajit Kumar Sami was appointed. Indeed. Then again when it came to the uh, if you remember the six man committee report which was going to have they were going to have a debate and a and a and a, a debate and a, uh, a presentation in Parliament in January, he said no, off it goes and the president had to bow down to it. Sorry, the Prime Minister Prime had, bowed, Minister, had to bow down to it. Then if you remember the Development Council bill, he got every pro, uh, provincial council where the SLP had a majority to beat it down. Yeah. So I think both the Development Council bill which tried to make the... This is the Super, super, the minister, super minister. And the Junior Super Minister, yeah. Assistant Super Minister, two Super Ministers, yeah. one Senior, one Junior, was is out of the... The parliamentary system for the moment and I think it will be a dead letter for the rest of your life. I, uh, I don't think that six-man committee report is going to be it probably gathered dust in an, on another shelf. So as it is, we can see the prime minister, the president emerging even on this question issue of the bond issue. His appointing a committee I think is welcomed by all. If there may be a delay on his part but he can justify the delay on the basis that he waited for the Prime Minister to do something and when the Prime Minister was doing nothing, he stepped in. So in this process, because of this queer section 70A, it's on the Queer way. section, queer. a lovely English word. Queer, queer section, because queer within inverted commas. Yeah. And well. uh, the reason why I say that is uh, queer because this matter was argued before Justice Siri Bhavan uh, on the question of franchise. And mm. he, you see, it doesn't matter when an argument is induced, you can 
you have to either accept it or reject it given reasons mm. but neither was it accepted rejected or reasons or even a word said in the act and as it is all these cri- all the present problems arise because of the 70 a by which i would not be surprised if in the as mr rajapaksa mahindra rajapaksa keeps saying come singhala new year i will be the prime minister it is quite possible it's very easy for him to become the prime minister without elections and that be a total change of government without a election the um, sorry while, while you're going on we we've had um, various questions from uh, viewers for yes. reacting to what we said earlier um one person is mentioning pointing out that the three uh, lawyers appointed in some in the the, the pitipana committee uh were un peers with no experience in what matters of the bond another one says uh in parliament it was mentioned that mahendran had advised and lectured the monetary board of sri lanka another one points out that he can't be um that he can't have any love of this country because his first and foremost he is uh his loyalties are to the state of singapore apparently he is a singaporean citizen and uh, uh, yet another one says this is a ex- uh, extremely interesting topic on how uh, one media organization is uh, uh, is being the tar- is being targeted to be controlled and so and so on and so on um, I, i agree with all i mean you have said much more than what i have said and i think they quite entitled to say all that except one exception he, he says he doesn't seem to love the country i think he, more than anyone whom he loves seems to be his son in law <laughs> well you know that's nothing wrong with that is matters don't if i didn't say uh but but no on on a serious note though um the presidential action being taken now must not be misconstrued for anything other than a sign that the president of this country has given enough of a leeway and has watched and he's obviously fed up he is fed up because people complain to him after all he is the one with the mandate but he true but he has watched too long yes he, he could have he could have helped the government he could have helped himself if he intervened earlier because this this is the largest possible scandal like in this country faced in recent times and these scandals are becoming more and more and this is a government that came into office on the basis of good governance and that I I lost. want to I want to put it to you I want you to consider what I'm about to say the auditor general no less of this country actually quantified it the minister of finance said that it was not quantified and it's all pie in the sky well it's not it's not the auditor general of this country quantified the losses to the country on the day that the bond was issued this was talking about the february 2015 disastrous bond 30 years now then That amount Mr. Dassey was about 1.6 billion rupees two days. I I say to you that this must be must qualify for the largest sum of money ever made commercially on a per day basis because over a period of two days they made 1.6 billion and you multiply that by all the rest of it. and you find out that i'm sure we ought to be writing to uh the um, editor of the Guinness Book of World Records to inquire if our bond scandal on a per day basis qualifies for a world record it does because i don't like it's much worse than watergate which watergate this would be called central gate and i think not deep throat was the character there i think you're the man who should write the book on under the title of loud mouth well we consider that but we will consider that but you know the, the messages are coming in thick and fast because obviously the people's conscious conscience has got aroused and it does because after all the invincible took place in january the 8th 2015 but you know i'm ashamed of our whole parliament on this because nobody's taken it the issue up i mean you have the cop giving a report 
Why exactly. are why, I mean look look what is why the joint you, opposition doing? What is the government doing? Why did Sirisena hang on for so long to find this commission? I mean it is public outcry, it's media media uh, action that has prompted the government. I mean I that is why I give you a lot of credit you and uh, the, the uh, Sun Times group. These are the people who, which I think, are today's heroes are the press, the media, and that may be why the Prime Minister is attacking the media brutally. If not for the media, this would have been just another cover-up, and there are so many cover-ups, and media is, to that extent, I also compliment the government. They have given the media a certain amount of leeway to make this kind of... Uh, I, I any, can't uh, understand and comprehend the actions of this uh, DG, you know, in, in trying to send us that uh, thing. After all, we've been reporting on matter that there is allegedly fraudulent. Then we report on the person uh, that Cope has named as being worthy of investigation. And we are doing so on behalf of the people. Also, we must be proud that we have people like the Auditor General who are independent, who are bold, who are courageous Indeed. to report on this type of matter. And that I'm ashamed, in fact, of another gentleman whom I had a lot of respect, the Commissioner of Elections. I mean, what is he doing now without having the local government elections? And more so, I would like to say that the really the gentleman from the Department of Information should try to follow the footsteps of the Auditor General without being independent. Then only we can admire and appreciate public servants, otherwise we'll have to call some of the public servants as psychophants if they behave sent uh, letters of this nature. But the thing is that I think if you look at it with the elections, it's not 2020 that is going to matter. It is going to be the local government elections because the local government elections, is, in my belief, will not be held next year because there is this problem with uh, the minister and the commission, the delimitation commissioners fighting out. Actually, the minister has said, I think, to something to effect that there were certain defects. If that is so, those defects should have been shown to the and rectified. This is a home and home match between the uh, delimitation commission and the mm. minister. I don't. I think both parties are. Act, I don't know whether they are acting in concert or otherwise. But they, to me, it sounds. Like, a home and home match. I believe elections may be held next year, but if even if it, that is so, it will be held on the basis elections that are favorable to the government will be first held. I wouldn't be surprised if the central province and the northern province elections are held and that they expect the domino concept to take place. But yes. let me tell you this today. The situation is so bad, so appalling for the poor people who thought that they will have a good governance. I mean, for the poor man, it's not good governance. He, he's got to have his basic needs, and those are so expensive today. I, today, it's very difficult for the government to win an election. So that I think Mahinda Rajapaksa will help the government tremendously if he takes over the burden. Because in my belief, the p person who will be in office at the time the elections will be held will be the loser. Hmm. I, I think the UNP might very comfortably, very conveniently hand over the power to Mr. Sirisena and the SLFP to run the government for the next two, two three years because they'll make such a mess of it. No, they'll make I, such I, a mess of it, haven't they, already? And I think what, what, what they should do is to give Ranil Wixing a, a full term of five years. If he's so unpopular in two years, imagine what his condition will be after five years. God help the country. God help the people. Another I think, one. I, I another another I, message. Sorry. Yes, go on. I think, I think you need a new leadership. New leadership means not... It, age doesn't matter. Remember, J.R. Jawadhan got a 5-6 majority when he was 71 years. What you need is a new face, fresh face in power. Now, you have a person like Bernie Sanders giving Hillary Clinton a tough right. But he was a, he looked old in his face. He, looked, he was an elderly gentleman. You have uh, uh, people who are old. It's not old that matters. You need so a fresh are you, face. Are you saying, Mr. Dasi, that there are people uh, of the same sort of quality and strength and vision as uh, J.R. Wardner and uh, President uh, Rana Singh Premadasa? Do you think there's somebody out there? There are. There are people, but if the people are not allowed to emerge because at that time and age, 
you had politicians emerging. Today only the children of politicians or the politicians' relations or politicians' psychophones can come into politics because it's all a family affair. And that has been a dismal performance, whether it is come from uh, President Premadasa or President uh, Rajapaksa. I don't think their children are held in high esteem as themselves. And uh, it's, it's a tragic thing that it's all family uh, bandism that prevents new people emerging. What you need is young people. I mean, your generation and my generation, we did the job. We finished terrorism. Now they got to finish corruption and bring governance back. And what is the next generation um, doing? They are not we, doing the job. As we come towards the end of this uh, morning's uh, program, uh, somebody is reacting to the statement about uh, the potential um, Guinness Book of World Records for the in, amount of profit made just over two days um, and confirmed by the Auditor General. Uh, it says here, um, Anura, I, I presume Anura Kumar Sanaki said in Parliament that even selling drugs can't make this kind of money during this short period. Now, that's a telling indictment, but I'm glad that it's got you thinking because do fact check and go back and I'm sure that there is a case for this uh, scandal to enter the Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, I should certainly be writing to the editor uh, later this morning uh, to inquire um, on this matter. Um, but there you are. You, you see, uh, it's a Guinness Dan, which gets into Guinness Book of Records as, as a scandal that I was not never inquired into. That too. That too. That too. I hope President Sirisena's endeavours will succeed. But important thing is he must appoint people of credibility. Just because you are a Supreme Court just doesn't make you a holy cow. You okay. have to have a man of integrity. Because in the Supreme Court there are very, very many people who have absolutely have excellent records. Such people should be appointed. I mean, we had a man like Veera Mantri who had a very good record. But what appointment did he get in Sri Lanka? On that note, uh, and for those uh, sort of incisive analysis, uh, Mr. Gomindasi, uh, it's been a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. Do come back because we want to talk to you about the composition of the Presidential Commission into the bond. Uh, but that will take another program. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Um, and uh, as we sign off, we want to say that we are the People's Channel, well and truly so. And we report when the people are being stolen from. And we will continue to do that no matter what. And we don't need any new act or anything else to give life to what we have already been, uh, what we have already started and what we will continue to do. Never fear about that. DG information or anything of the sort. Right to information, all of that is there. But this channel will carry on on its part well and truly established, well and truly paved. The road ahead may be a bit stormy, it may be full of potholes, and who knows what else, but we will continue. On that note, actually I want to say one more thing. We have the courage to be different. And indeed we do. On that note, take care. Thanks for watching Newsline. God bless.